Welcome to the Branson Woodwind Shop. I have a tuba and the solder joint between the bell and the first branch is broken. That is very common on tubas that do not have a brace there. It's called a contact solder joint and they just put solder between the two pieces with no brace. Here's the solder joint. I'm going to zoom in on that for you so you can see it a little bit better. There is a gap right in between there between the bell and the first branch and almost always when those break there is a gap right there. You cannot just solder that together. I'm going to zoom back out and I'm going to show you what happens. If you just solder this together you'd have to push it so that you could uh, get solder in there but probably within a week or so that joint would be broken again just because there would be so much tension on it pulling away from it. Usually when this joint is broken, there's almost always a dent in the bell too. So you can go in the bell with a mandrel and push that dent out. And usually that brings the two closer together. But still you have that problem of that joint is probably going to break again. So how I keep that from happening again is I put a brace in there. This is my brace drawer and I have a lot of braces in there. Um, and a lot of these will work on tuba. Um, there are ones that have just a little bit of space in between there. Uh, so depending upon the gap, I use one that will fit. This one is just two flanges soldered together, so there's not a huge gap. So I think I'm going to use this brace. So here's the brace. I'm going to slide that in there. And I'm not ready to solder it on yet because I need to clean off the lacquer. This is called a flange burnisher. And you use that to push the flanges of the brace up against the instrument. So I'm going to do that as good as I can. Um, right now it's not going to work that well because it needs to be partially soldered before you can do a really good job with this. But what I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to get this lined up to where it needs to be so that I can mark this. Solder does not stick to lacquer, so I need to remove the lacquer underneath where the brace is. And normally what I would do is put the brace in there, and then I'd mark it with a poker where it needs to go on the tuba. Then I would use sandpaper and a scraper to get the lacquer off. But it's going to be hard to get at it because these two pieces are so close. So what I'm going to do instead is put the brace where it needs to go. I'll slide that in there. And then, then I'm going to take a razor and cut around where the brace needs to go. I'm done marking it all the way around, so I'm going to pull the brace off and then remove the tape underneath where the brace is going to go. Now I can use the sandpaper to get in there without damaging the lacquer on the instrument. I cleaned up the surfaces of the tuba and the brace. You always need clean surfaces to work with for solder to stick to the surface. So what I'm going to do is line that up. And I'll slide it into place and line it up. Okay. That looks good. Now I'm ready to solder. You do not need that much to solder. I have a torch and then I have the solder, 70% tin, 30% lead. Other kinds will work, but this is the kind I usually use. And also the bottle of flux. I'm going to heat up the brace and then put some flux on there. And then heat it up a little bit more. Okay, here it's up to temperature. And the solder is flowing in. Okay. A little while ago I mentioned that I'm going to need to get the flange closer to the surface of the tuba. Now I'm going to use a flange burnisher to do that now that it is partially attached to the instrument. What that does is makes the gap smaller. Now I'm going to turn it around and do the same thing to the other side. Now I'm going to continue soldering. I'm running out of acetylene. I'm going to need to buy some more. That's why the flame is yellow right there. So it's not the best way to do a solder joint, but uh, that's what I need to use right now. And I'm going to buy some more probably in the next day or two. Okay. Yeah. Now these large solder joints are a little more difficult than the small solder joints. It's going to need more flux. Okay. Now I'm going to feed in more solder. I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to need to clean up this solder joint when I'm done. 
because this is not the cleanest solder joint. It's not a terrible one, but it's not the cleanest one either. Now I'm going to turn it around. This one's going to be a little harder to get at because of where the tubing is. So I'm just going to have to get in there as good as I can. I laid the tuba down on its side so that the solder will flow down instead of up. Now solder can flow upwards by capillary action, but it works a lot better if it just flows downward. So I'm going to warm that up. And when it gets up to temperature, the solder will start to flow. I know it's hard to see on the camera, but I'm going to try to get it at an angle where you can see it. Okay, there, the solder is going in. Uh, so. This is a harder solder joint to get at because there is tubing in the way. But I'm going to do as good as I can. Okay, now I'm going to use a flange burnisher again to finish pushing the brace against the tuba. Okay, that will further reduce the gap. I'm going to put some more flux on there. What the flux does is it cleans the metal, it takes the oxygen off so that the surfaces are clean. The solder needs clean surfaces to stick to. I'm trying to get the solder around the joint, all the way around the flange. Almost done. I'm just trying to get it around to the other side, which is not wanting to do. Solder follows the heat, so when it melts, it flows to where the heat is. So I'm trying to use the heat to move the solder all the way around and this requires a lot more solder than most joints because it is a large flange and uh, usually you just use a tiny bit of solder you do not want to use too much solder but sometimes you need more than others I'm going to put some more flux on there where the solder is not wanting to go maybe that will help it flow in there better let's see Okay, there that looks good. I'm going to solder the other side of the brace the same way as the first side. Heat it up, put some flux on there, and heat it up a little more, and then put in the solder. And I'll do the same thing as I did on the other one until the job is done. And then I need to do the other side too. But there's a lot more that could be said about soldering. I will leave links to several other videos I have on soldering, and if you would like, you may watch those ones. Now I need to neutralize the flux so that the flux stops acting on the metal. If you're wondering what the neutralizer is, it's ammonia mixed with water. I finished the solder joint, and I cleaned up the solder mess that was on there. And you can see that it is shinier around here. That will tarnish over time, and it will start to look like the rest of it. If the rest of the tuba was shiny, I would lacquer this so that it would match what the rest of the tuba looks like. But since this is very tarnished, I'm just going to leave this unlacquered and over time the oxygen will get to it and then it will start to look like the rest of the tuba. If you want to learn more about soldering, look in the description below for links to related videos. And also be sure to use all of the safety measures when you're soldering. Thank you for watching. I hope this video has been helpful. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos.